a few house rules before we kick off. First, welcome to my house. If you can see anything beyond the bubbles, um, meeting most of you for the first time, so I thought it's only fair to invite you into my house. Uh, the second thing that you need to keep in mind is, here's a refresher just in case. We have a lot of people on Hangouts here. I think, uh, you know, many, many people. And it's really important that we obey a few ground rules so that it's a pleasant experience for everyone, right? So what we have to do, let's kind of walk through that. First, please mute yourself and do not unmute yourself at any point throughout this webinar, right? I know it's difficult, but please try to do that. The second, uh, well, this is how you turn the camera off if you like. It's up to you, uh, your call. Next, if you want to find out how to pin the screen, the presentation that I am uh, you know, uh, putting out from my computer, uh, this bubble on top, the head bubble, uh, that's how you will do it. And you can pin the presentation and lodge it and you know, basically focus on that. Then, this is the way you will communicate with each other. I will not be looking at the chat. Uh, so if you all want to communicate with each other, you can use the chat option to do so, right? Now, with that, let's kick off. Um, you please. Thank you. That is exactly what we don't want. All right. Now, how do you pin the presentation? You see the face that you want, you click on it. It is really pinned, right? Uh, as we kind of see here. Now, how are we going to do questions? Online questions.org. Simple, go in there. Remember this idea, you're also going to see it at the bottom of every slide as we go ahead. 202-00521. Just enter that event number and you can go in and add questions. They'll all be anonymous. So, you know, uh, try not to keep them too fun. But yeah, add the questions you like. You can even upvote questions from others that you think are important if they're already asked. And then at the end of the session, for about 10 to 15 minutes, uh, I and my colleagues can go through these. All right. So, you know, when you think about analytics, right, you know, there's always a question, right, which is, is this really, you know, rocket science or is this storytelling? And, you know, the answer to that is, it, it is actually rocket science for storytelling, right? So, at the end of the day, you know, we're all in the consumer business, we're all in the storytelling business. And analytics is really about telling the story of what's happening with your consumers. And then you do use a few numbers and a few, you know, put a little bit of science and rigor into writing that story. So how do we do this, right? We first need to have a mental approach in place, right? So the first thing that we all need to do is one, define what our goals are, right? You know, everything starts with a clear goal. I want to be at this level on this date. And the next question is for you to then have a hypothesis of how you will get there, right? Are you going to reach this level of worship, you know, because you shared it with a lot of people? Is it because that the platform itself recommends it? Is it something that is super searchable and people find it, you know? So you need to then have either out of your gut instinct or experience or data, some kind of a plan to get there, right? To just upload a video is not a plan. Right. You also need to have a way for people to kind of get there. The third thing is for whatever your plan is, you need to decide what are the important metrics. Right. You can't look at all metrics for all plans, but for each plan, you need to take a look at the right metrics. So, you know, I'll give you an example. Right. Uh, here's a simple thing. Right. Let us say, you know, your strategy is that you will share on social. Right. Then maybe the metrics that you want to look at is you know, the inbound views coming in from the traffic source, which is search, right? Which is maybe not something that you would use for something else. And it's not aggregate views, but it's something very specific, right? So you need to kind of think about that. And then the last thing is when you kind of put this all together, you then have a story, which is really how your audience discovered it, how they interact with it. And then that is story, right? I'm going to let you in on something which is going to blow your minds. What does YouTube optimize towards? The answer is not views, but it's just watch time. It's time. All right, it's not really that big a revelation or a secret. Uh, so here's something, right? 
pretty much the whole video industry since the beginning of you know tv really has focused on time right like if you think about you know ratings on tv through any you know your nielsen's and you know whatever you have really what everyone's optimizing for is time spent viewing the content it's no different on youtube that's what we go towards so how much time do people spend watching a video your channel your playlist and the overall platform and you know at a really high level that's what we're trying to optimize towards and so when you are looking at your whole strategy what you want to do is really think about what affects time because all the other things that are important really come with that now how do we kind of get here now if you think about this logically right there are only a few ways by which people can discover and then start watching a video right and by the way what i'm going to tell you now you already know this it's actually extremely simple and you navigate this every day just as consumers right so let's kind of go through that and then look at the logical imperatives from each of these parts right so here is the first part simple search people search for things i'm sure many of you might have heard from your youtube partner managers or you know externally that you know while google is the world's largest search engine youtube is the world's second largest search engine maybe right so if it's the world's second largest search engine and a lot of people are searching right how do you get people to discover content that is relevant to them simple you tell us you put it in your titles you put it in your description this is your metadata if you put it in we know it if you don't put it in we don't know it right now let's take a look at this example here right if someone searches for coronavirus versus covid or covid 19 right you know these are all different searches and we sometimes may be decent at joining the dots but a lot of times we rely on you to tell us so we only know what you tell us simple how do you figure out what search terms are popular right and you know this could basically come in from two viewpoints you know one goal could really simply be to say hey how do i make content around topics that are currently being searched for so for that you could use tools like trends.google.com lot of powerful tools for you to figure out you know what people are watching at a category at an item at an entity level or a country one hour last seven days a lot of good stuff there you know there are tools within google ad manager itself have to kind of do similar things right and please don't judge my preferences when you see them here the second thing that you can also do is you could also use it to maybe refine your metadata so that you know okay if i have the right piece of content how do i make sure that i write my titles and my descriptions in a way such that he discovers it using the search options that he has right so you could basically maybe use terms that are relevant that are maybe slightly more popular as opposed to less popular choices right the second way that's the first way the second way the youtube homepage right now you know because you know we are we need a we're all on our maybe our computers right now that's my assumption you know put up a computer screenshot but you know i would really like you to visualize this from the standpoint of your phone right if you open up your phone and you open the youtube homepage you generally just see one two maybe two thumbnails right the top ones generally an ad and then maybe you see one or two videos right so what does this really mean first thing is you know that real estate which is probably the most valuable real estate on youtube uh, you know that first video that second video in that feed you know as you're scrolling through that right people are going to really look at this and react visually right because you know each you know when you have one or two videos basically on the screen each videos you know the opportunity to convert to click on it and then to start watching you know that's a lot higher right and that's the first thing that you should really keep in mind right so how do you end up on the home page you know what goes into the home page uh, the first thing is well really you know one we are optimizing for time and within that we are looking at one you know recency of uploads right uh, we look at you know what you're regularly watching as well as what's coming from your subscriptions right so what do you do here first you know encourage people to click how do you do that beautiful high resolution focused thumbnails right stand out uh, give yourself a template for your brand so that when people see they don't even need to think they know it's coming from your channel right second regular uploads because they come very often on your home screen i don't know if you've noticed this but if you look at your home page traffic in your traffic sources report you often see that that for a video is in the first few days and then maybe not so much later and the reason for that is the way this gets surfaced right 
uh, take a look at your click-through rate. Now, what is click-through rate? We'll look at it later, but at a simple level, you know, how many people are clicking on the thumbnail and then starting to watch the view, right? So that, that ratio, you know, that's a click-through rate. So what do you have to do? Get people to subscribe. How do you get people to subscribe? Well, you can ask them. You can literally put up a slate at the beginning of your video saying, folks, subscribe. Uh, you can put in subscription links in the description. Uh, you can enable the channel icon, which helps you get people to subscribe. Uh, I'm sure you have seen a lot of CDs where people at the end of a video tell folks, hey, people like, subscribe, so forth, so on. So go ahead and do those things. Not rocket science. Ask people, and a lot of times they do that. You know, one more simple thing, when you share links on social or externally, why don't you try sharing the subscribe URL? That is URL which if you post from your channel, when they click on it, they'll come to a page which says, are you sure you want to subscribe? It's a great idea, right? Then of course, we have a subscription tab, which is under our overall browse features strategy, right? So over there, when you look at this, um, uh, this is pretty much just in reverse, um, This sorry, this is just in chronological order. The most recent uploads from your subscription service. As simple as that. People subscribe, you see them. Next, the next way, you people come to your channel and here, what you are doing is instead of YouTube's algorithm <laughs> curating for the consumer, you are curating for the consumer, right? Now, here's a look at something which, you know, you two have recently done, right? You know, again, I'm a YouTube fan. I watched their show here last year. Yes, remember the days when we used to go to concerts? Those days will come again. Anyway, Bono just, as he turned 60 years old, put out a playlist called 60 Songs That Saved My Life. You know, uh, only a few songs are really from his own channel. You know, most of these are from artists that he admires. So he's curating here something for them. And then after that, then he's putting up content from his channel or channels he admires, albums, you know, conversations. So he's curating and arranging this website or an app, you know, any content app. You know, here are the things that I think you should see, right? So this is what you can do over here. So I think over here, what you want to do is one, really get into the shoes of your consumer, understand what they want and what is of value for them. Two, think visual, think visual, think visual, right? You know, um, it's like putting, you know, it's really important to be visual and then design around that because packaging is everything, right? It's like I take jewelry and then I put in a plastic bag. No, you know, I'm going to put it in a great jewelry case, right? It's the same with your visual presentation, right? So I think that's the other thing that you need to think about. The other thing is, just like all across the internet, you know, the top level real estate is really prime time. You know, most people look at that and then they make a decision or they move on. So, you know, put up the things that your consumers are really going to, um, you know, are really going to kind of find valuable up at the top. And then next, the next way of discovering content, the video watch page, which is what? While you're watching a video, right? So if you're on your phone, if you are in the portrait mode, you see all of this real estate below that, right? Or if you're on a computer, you maybe see a lot more. And if you're in the landscape mode, then, you know, when you pull up some of those overlays, then you see some options, right? So all of those clickable things, you know, that's really your video watch page. And some part of this is what we recommend, right? You know, this is really what we're recommending. This is what is our suggested, right? But that's really based on personalized preferences. There's not a lot that you can do there. However, if you see, we have some beautiful products like cards and end cards where you can actually tell the viewer, hey, if you are watching this, why don't you also watch this? In fact, this might be the most valuable real estate for you to cross promote because this is really where you get the most time and attention and interaction from your consumer, right? So this is a really important thing. And then the last thing, right? Clicking on a link when you are not on YouTube. So this could be a website, this could be an app, this could be an ad, this could be social, you know, this could be anything, right? And the way to think about this is a very simple formula, right? I'm outside YouTube, I shared my video link. How many people did it reach? How many people clicked on it? And that's the views that you most likely will get, as simple as that. And it's so simple to demystify that, right? Let's say you put out a Facebook post and it reaches a million people, okay? And you get, let's say, a one-person click-through rate, which is a good click-through rate, right? Then that's, what, a thousand people? If my math is not wrong. Uh, but yeah, you get a thousand people. So you're gonna get a thousand views. So it's as simple as that externally. So what are the to-dos for you over here, right? You got to really think about how do I leverage media outside of YouTube to basically drive views. And what you need to do is really think a bit deeper. It's not just about the action of posting or sharing, 
But to really say, if I want a million or 10 million or you know whatever goal views and then watch time from this traffic source, have I reached enough people at this 1% or 2% or 0.1% click-through rate so that I get those views? If you don't do that, you will not get that, right? So that's it. Think about this. These are all of the ways you can discover content. One, someone searched. Two, they subscribed and you saw them on the home page or subscriptions tab. Third, they came to your channel and you curated something for them. Fourth option, they were watching a video of yours, however they came there, and then you suggested something. And then five, they were not on YouTube. You found a way to reach them either on your website, a deal, social, an ad, whatever it is, they clicked and they came there. Now, why is this important? Why did I kind of walk you through all of this, right? To go back to the first point I made, you know, analytics is really, when you think about the mental model, it's just about verifying if your hypotheses held through, right? You know who your consumer is. You have a hypothesis on how he should reach you, and then you take some actions. Analytics is really about measuring that. Did it happen the way you thought it would? Is it happening to the extent it is? Can I carry out tests? And then can I get better at executing my strategy? Right? Again, to iterate the point as we go ahead, please remember to always think in watch time. So every time you do an action, you know, you really want to think about like, is it productive? And that productivity is to really think, does every action I take add watch time and how much does it do? And then you want to keep doing more of the higher watch time adding activities and less of the lower watch time adding activities. Like, what is the point of posting on social thousand times a day if all of your traffic is coming from search, for example, right? Uh, you know, just to give you a very, very uh, silly example, right? All right. Now, what we will now do is keeping this in mind, let's now take this and see how do we kind of implement this and then use the new and improved analytics which has a bunch of really nice features that we worked hard on uh, launching for you. So let's go to it. So the first thing is now, you know, we talked about those metrics, right? So maybe here is a way for you to think about understanding your channel and then, you know, attaching some companion metrics. And I'm sure a lot of you use much more sophisticated metrics, like the way you think about these. And, you know, a lot of you will come up with your own. And I think it's not, a, it's not that this is the rule book of, these are the metrics to watch. Rather, it's really about seeing of these metrics at which level of drill down or for which one of my strategies are the appropriate metrics, thinking through that and then finding the right set of metrics to tap, right? So if you want to understand your channel, the first thing is you want to say, hey, how is my channel doing? So you could look at it from a, you know, the mother metric watch time standpoint, then, you know, views, subscribers, etc. gives you a general picture. But you want to go deeper and you can do that. We'll get to that. The second, who is watching? A view is not a view is not a view. You have to know your target audience. Remember, you cannot be something for everyone, but you can surely be everything for someone, right? And so know your target audience and define them. The demographics, where they are, you know, the device OS, and then things that which, you know, unfortunately we cannot surface in analytics, but I think you can qualitatively get, right? Who is this person? How do they spend their day? What are the important moments of their life? When do they interact with you? What are the emotional feelings about your content in your channel? And you know, having that good psychographic map, which is an understanding of your consumer, you know, that's going to help you actually execute better, which then means you will measure better in analytics. Third, how do they get there? You know, for me, this is literally the most important thing to look at, right? This is your daily, weekly, monthly chart like this for me is the bible analytics uh uh you know this is the bible analytics section we will come to that right but your reach how they got there which is why i spent all of this time before walking you through that and then you know of course the click through rate which is how many people had i reached with my thumbnails how many clicked on it and then you know uh gave me a view which then led to time right and then the last part once they started watching what did they do? Did they watch for one second? Did they watch for one hour? Did they then subscribe? Did they carry out CTAs? Did they share? Did they like? Did they comment? You know, all of these things which you do once you start watching a video. You know, for me, one of the things I feel is the biggest tragedy is for someone to discover your video, watch it, and then leave. That is not success. That is a failure. Watching a video 
should be referenced in the same room. Please mute, sir or madam. Thank you. Yes. So it would be a tragedy for someone to basically just watch a video and leave. You want someone to watch a video and then like or subscribe and subscribe or watch the next video or have a takeaway to come back next week to not watch the video. The video is just opening the door. Once you come in, you want to sit them down on the couch, you want to give them some snacks, you want to give them a drink, you want to hang out with them, right? So please keep this in mind. And that's a really important part of that journey as well. So don't stop at watch the video and left, but what after? So here is your wheel of fortune. I know I'm presenting a lot of models here, but maybe this is just how I mentally kind of think about this. So I'm just sharing this with you. So what are the next steps and how do these map back to analytics? We've gone through this. Define your audience, establish an action on the growth strategy. Have a strategy in mind, then take an action. And then now we come to analytics, right? Now what happens? And you need to define a frequency. Now, everything you measure will be measured on a different frequency. Not every report is worth on a daily basis or weekly or monthly basis. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're taking a look at your, at your channel demographics at a channel level. Maybe it's not worth checking this every single day. Right? Unless something just fundamentally different happens where you know one video becomes 90% of your views. On a regular day, you know, your audience is your audience. So what's the point of checking it on a daily basis? Maybe instead you want to track the change across a quarter or you know, some appropriate frequency. Right? So that's something. Maybe if you want to look at traffic sources patterns on a regular basis, maybe weekly is enough, but for certain videos, you might want to check daily. Right? So I think for every metric that you check. You really want to have a weekly, a daily, sorry, a daily, a weekly, a monthly, and then of course, quarterly, yearly, et cetera, analysis, timeframes. But time frame is so important in deciding how you are assessing your business. And then the last part, the thing about digital is, right, it is unlimited, unlimited time, unlimited storage, unlimited bandwidth, and also unlimited forgiveness to some extent, which means what? you can test and test and test and test because you know this is not a you know this is not a pond this is a river right things are always moving so what's true today may not be true tomorrow in fact will likely not work tomorrow and what is going to work tomorrow nobody knows if you think about this most of us folks here at youtube and partner managers i don't think we are really coming to you with original ideas that we have discovered on our own we're actually taking a look at what you all do figuring out the things which are best practices and then sharing it back with the you know with the broader community and so it is very important for you to FBI, your ten percent, 15 percent, you know whatever you're comfortable with is really how much of testing you're going to do you know does this style work or does that style work does this promotional strategy work or does that work keep on testing and every time you test you know you'll find i do 10 tests nine fail and one worked that is an amazing thing to find out because now you know the nine things that didn't work today and the one thing that can work and you'll only know it by testing, right? You know, not just that, the nine things which didn't work today, maybe day after they will work. So you've got to keep some of these things, you know, back in the bank and then bring them out on a regular interval, which makes sense for whatever you're trying to think about, right? So this is what I would say. Now, finally, let's get to the product and kind of walk through the, uh, you know, let's let's walk through the uh, the interface unfortunately you know i can't give you a live demo of the interface because you know with analytics i'll be throwing out data and i can't share you know one person's data with everyone so i'm going to be using screenshots so please add questions and then at the end of the dory i'll try to tackle them right in the you know in that that online questions but org section right all right now let's get to it so our new analytics is now organized slightly differently so if you look at the top you know you horizontally you kind of see this, which is really your conversion funnel, right? So first is you get an overview picture of you know, everything that's happening, and then you get into the conversion funnel, right? Which is reach. How many people did my thumbnails reach? And then what did people do? And then who were they? And then money, money, money. Most important thing, maybe for most partners, right? So that's how we try to organize it, right? So you take a look at the overview, broad picture. When you go to your analytics section, then you kind of see all of the important reach metrics. 
Now, let's take a look at this section in a bit more detail. The first thing you'll see over here is you kind of have an overview section as opposed to a deep dive analytics section, you know, at first, uh, uh, first glance, right? Here itself, interestingly, now you can add a date range and basically filter, right? So this is a big ask, which is an improvement in this view. And then you can see a lot of things, right? Like, you know, where did my audience come from, right? Two impressions and how they led to watch time, right? Because people have to see a thumbnail and then click on it and then watch it and then spend time, right? And time is your objective, not views, right? And then playlists and so forth. So you've got a lot of important, um, you know, views here, which can kind of give you a summary view. Then the next thing that you do is you get them into engagement. All right, they started watching my video. Now, what do they do? What are the top videos? What are the top videos in terms of, you know, my portfolio cross promotion? Uh, what are the top shares and the compilations and the curation that I've done and so forth, so on, right? So all of these things that you have worked hard at, you can actually see the top level view of the results over here. Now, if you want to now see who these people are, right? Because, you know, you have a hypothesis about your audience and then you want to make sure that you are reaching them, right? You can actually see this here. And here are a couple of interesting things. So the first thing is, you know, right up top, we are surfacing this to you, right? About, you know, what is the watch time from your subscribers and non-subscribers? Now, you know, a lot of you have, have asked us before, hey, I have a million subscribers. How did I get just 10,000 views, right? You know, first interesting thing is, you know, not all of your videos reach all of your subscribers from an impression standpoint. Two, not all of your subscribers will want to watch every video of yours, number two. The third part, a large part of your reach is actually from people who are not subscribed to you, right? And I think that's what makes YouTube really interesting, right? Because you can keep going beyond your subscription, this one, right? That's why if you have a million subscribers, you can get 10 million views as well, right? So you kind of see that snapshot up top, right? Then a lot of the things about your audience, and then here is something which all of you have, I'm pretty sure 100% of you have wanted to know before, which is, hey, why have people, you know, people keep complaining, I did not get a notification, or I did not see this video because I did not get the right uh, notification for a new upload, right? So we are actually giving you a quick snapshot on, you know, bell notification analytics, right? You know, how many people over here actually have said that they want to receive your notifications? And then on doing so, how many of them actually clicked through and went there? So you really understand this. By the way, even if people have said they want to watch your channel's notifications, they want to receive your channel's notifications, they may actually go to the YouTube app and say, hey, I don't want to receive notifications more than once a day or once a week. Or if you're like me, and frankly, you know, this is a confession from my side, you know, I've disabled all of my YouTube notifications. I just don't like notifications. So it really doesn't matter what I do at the channel level, right? But at least that snapshot is available to you here, right? Then from there, we go into revenue, right? So all of the important things, you know, how much money did I make? What were the top videos? You know, where did it come from? And so this really then helps you map out your ROI, right? So how did people come there? What did they start engaging with? And then finally, that th did this make sense for you, right? So you can kind of see all of these things and then kind of put this together. Now you might tell me, hey, Sadat, you know, this is great. This gives you a great snapshot, but how do I go get deeper? Let me show you, right? So the first thing is, there are a couple of ways by which you can do this. One minute. All right. So the first thing is, if you want to take a look at just one particular video, you can actually go to the video section. And while you're looking at the videos and you want to see, hey, what have I done? You can actually just click through from there and go immediately into video analytics. So I think this is a key feature that a lot of people ask for. And similar to what you saw before, you can get all of these views at a video level. The second is, Within any of these tabs, you can actually, within analytics, within any of these sections, you can just click on the see more, see more here, see more here from any of these tabs, and you will immediately go into a detailed view, which now starts to look a bit similar to the old analytics, right? Now, this, by the way, is true whether you are looking at it from a CMS standpoint. There are slightly different things there. So we'll focus on the channel level, but if you understand this, you can also navigate CMS, right? So what happens over here? You see a series of layouts here, which is really the various types of views you can have, and then filters by which you can narrow down what you want to look at. And then you can see charting, and then familiar things, right? Like what's the first metric you want to chart? What's the second metric you want to chart? And then, you know, do I want to see a line chart, a bar chart? Do I want to see this daily, monthly? Do I want to see a particular date range? You know, all of these things that you know from before. So let's get into this, right? 
the first, my favorite thing to track, traffic sources. So how are all the ways people discovered your channel, your group of channels, your videos, your video group, you know, all of these things. You can basically look at this, right? And you can chart this and understand how things are going or go how, how things happen on a particular entity or how people are doing things over a period of time, right? And this really then helps you map out. You know, this is the one chart which tells you, was my strategy effective or not? Did how I hypothesized people would discover my content, did that actually happen or not? And to what extent, right? This is what tells you that. The next, right, interactions. Now, what are interactions? We talked about this before. How much time did I spend? Did I like it? Did I dislike it? Did I share? Did I subscribe? Did I add comments? So all of these things which kind of show a healthy relationship with your video, your content, your channel, you know, all of that is what you see here, right? This is right in upfront in the video tab. You know, you take a look on the additional metrics or you can choose another metric here. So here's an interesting thing we've done. You know, this table here, you can actually have different values here than you have in the chart above. So you can choose something here, which you will see here, or you can just keep adding metrics here in the table and have them populate before. So we've added this flexibility, right? So within this now, you might add things like, you know, likes, you can basically add, you know, cross promotion and the effectivity of this cross promotion. Um, you know, you can look at, for example, community engagement. So there are a lot of things over here that will really give you the full picture, right? Now, not every one of this is important for every video. Again, it goes back to, again, you know, I know I'm saying this at nauseum. Who's your audience? What did you expect them to do? Have they done it? So find the right metric. The next thing, right? The actual conversion. How much time have they spent actually watching that content now that they have reached that, right? Now within this, right, you want to do a couple of things, right? The first thing is you want to see maybe at an overall channel level, less at a video level, but maybe except for certain key videos, at overall channel level, see how is my consumption actually trending, right? Like what's the, okay, let me not use trend. What's the pattern like, right? So you might want to check for seasonality. You might want to check for how their interests change over time. So this is how you kind of graph that, right? So within that, you can actually look at geography, you can look at demographics, you can look at age, and you can kind of see these patterns over a, over a series of time, right? Next thing, you might want to create groups of important things. Now, the group creation functionality, right, has been moved here to the filter bar. So click on filters, go to groups, and here you will see existing groups from before, or else you can click on create new group and create groups. Now, it's very simply, let's say you have a collection of five videos or 10 videos or five channels, that you want to see the stats collectively for. You just go in there and select them, and that's it. You can actually create a group and then track its performance over a period of time, right? Last thing over here is demographics and gender, right? So you know these are essentially in these sections. These are quite self-explanatory. You click on these sections. You can basically see these reports. You can choose the time range. You can understand how these things move or change, and that kind of gives you that picture of what happens with your audience, right? Now. How do we measure this funnel and therefore where do you find these metrics? So we all know this because we've I've just spoken about this a few times. We start with impressions. We then go into the click-through rate, which is how many people clicked on your video thumbnails and then and how many views did it lead to. And then after that, the time spent. And we also give you unique reach in terms of your viewers, right? Unique viewers. So what you can actually do over here is you know, when you go into your detailed analytics, like when you click on reach, one is you can get the summary view over here where you see all of these important metrics and you can see these unique viewers, right? Uh, we spoke about this earlier. You can also, after that, you can also now start doing comparisons across seasonality, right? So for example, this video today, this video last year, using the compare to section over here, right? And then using that, kind of map back what are these fluctuations. So now you can do this for many of these important metrics, right? So I take a look at the funnel and I go to say impressions, right? Are my impressions going up or are they going down, right? Because if your reach does not increase, then you have a conversion problem. Or I'm converting people, but they are dropping off. Is my view duration okay or are people dropping off, right? So again, comparisons really help you with that, right? So this is really the best way to kind of really think about why something is happening if you're seeing change. Whenever you see change, don't look at it just in isolation, but look at it over a period of time, right? 
You can start looking at search trends, right? So you go back to your traffic sources, you know, compare popular search terms leading to your channel in this period, or you do a compare to and you look at the previous period. You can look at it a quarterback or you can look at it year on year, right? So that helps you talk about fundamental changes or seasonality, right? Which means that if that's seasonality, which means it happens every year, then maybe nothing to worry about, right? Maybe things will change in the next quarter. It also helps you think about things to look forward to. Because if you look at Q3 of last year, do you can you anticipate what will happen in the coming year? Right? So these are things to then kind of think about that. Right? The next thing is we have brought subscription status right for you to really get deeper into your relationship with your subscribers and non-subscribers you know really upfront earlier this used to be a hidden metric which you would filter down from somewhere around here and look at now you actually see this in the tab you also see this in the summary section right up front i showed you that and over here too you can just take a look at this and see you know how much youtube is actually expanding your reach beyond your subscribers and you know it's not uncommon for people to have 10 to 15 times more reach from on their non-subscribers versus their subscribers, right? Now, let's go to upload frequency. Now, this is a really, really important thing. You know, a lot of times, okay, let me put it this way. You know, a lot of us outside of say YouTube or digital have built certain habits with media, right? So every day at eight o'clock I go out and I pick up the paper, then at nine o'clock I listen to my podcast, and in the evening at seven o'clock, I watch maybe the show. And then at eight o'clock, I watch the news. Now, what if I turned on the news at eight o'clock and it wasn't news, but I started hearing music, right? So I need consistency in terms of what comes, how much comes, and when it comes, right? The same is true with YouTube. If you don't have consistency in terms of when, how much, and what you deliver, your audience cannot build habits and other relationship. And then therefore, you will not have a healthy viewing behavior with them. So I think. Part of keeping yourself honest, you know, you can really look at this upload frequency and then use that to map, you know, what really happened. And within that, you can also look at upload consistency, right? You know, how much did I upload and therefore how much did people watch and therefore what does this tell me about my consumption, right? One more, uh, you know, and before we kind of come to the last part of this, you know, one more really interesting thing which you will also see over here. When you go to the filter section at the top, to see the option to filter by the published date of a video. Now, generally, when you take a look at you know most of these reports, you will see all of the consumption that happened in January for videos that were published in January or the last year or before. But what we've done is within this filter option, we have also added a new filter option where you can say videos published only in the month of January. So you can look at March and understand only for the videos published in January, how are they doing in month one, month two, and month three, which will make a lot of, you know, this used to be five Excel sheets and then you know, cross them and see what's happening. Now this has become super simple. So that's again a new feature that we've added here, which you might find quite uh, helpful. So now, before we move on, let me go to the online Dory to start taking your questions. So let me just put this up over here. There we are. Give me a second and I will just put this up for you. All right. Okay, here are your questions. So let me spend the next 10 to 15 minutes kind of going through this. Hey, Pablo Gina, do you want to uh, kind of Kick this off. Sure, uh, as you wish. You've been speaking a lot, so maybe a break comes in handy. So yep. what we can do is we can start reading some of these questions. Let me turn my camera off. Um, some of these questions, uh, and then take turns and respond, or just jump in and respond. So um, the first question is: um, Why is the lifetime duration for a video group in YTA? Uh, starts when the channel was created instead of the dates when the video was uh, first uploaded, but the first video was uploaded. Um, that's a good question. Um, in fact, I think uh, for some, in some situations, uh, it's more the first time uh, a video was uploaded, not when the channel was created. Sometimes 
uh, channel owners delete videos. Um, but that's a good question. Maybe we, we, that's something we can raise with the team and say uh, this shouldn't go back as far back. Um, but I'm curious to know if this is causing any other issue that you find. So feel free to to add another question there or chat if you if you need. But that's a good point. That's a good question. This is actually a good idea. We could actually probably just take this back as a suggestion yep. to the product team. They're quite engaged on this. Uh, yeah, thank you for this. We could surface this back. Great. And the second question, is there a way we can get the details of non-subscribers so we can convert or convince them to subscribe to our channel? Um, so I think to try to address this question, there are two ways to look at this. I think one is first around Google's um, privacy uh, policies. We don't necessarily uh, track every viewer for their data. So they can log in and we may be able to understand if they're registered as female located in a certain place. But beyond that, it's very hard for us to, from a policy level, um, drive that data point. And secondly, actually, as Sid mentioned in the call, um, we are able to get a lot of non-subscriber information. Um, you know, your channel might be getting a lot of uh, views from non-subscribers, watch time, or views or engagement. Um, and that really helps you understand using what kind of tools that drive more subscriptions, which we have uh, addressed in our 101 classes. So there's things like end screens, um, different, you know, branding elements that you can put across your channel that would drive more subscribers. But if you want their phone numbers, the answer is no. It's not <laughs> happening. <laughs> all right. There is no select all field in the video field to show all lines. Okay. Actually, this is a good point. Uh, and so what happens is for some sections where we actually can't chart it, that intentionally we do not allow for, you know, for this to happen. But there are some sections where I know what you're saying. You get to the section. Initially, you see everything. Then when you unselect, you don't have a select all. Uh, good one. We could actually uh, put this back. Because after that, you have to manually add. You're right. Uh, we can send this back. Good. Uh, good suggestion. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Okay. Why can't we see the revenue earned in every traffic source? Uh, we intentionally do not disclose that. Uh, as per, I mean, this this is just an executive decision internally. We are not disclosing that. We are not likely to disclose it in that way. Uh, this is the best level of granularity that we are able to show you. Cool. I can read out the next one um, from the Wheel of Fortune section. Is there a best practice time period that you would expect to conduct a test to yield a significant result? Anything you would recommend to test first? Um, maybe you want you should want to add something on this, but in general, um, you know, YouTube is. If you work with other uh, digital um, properties like websites and so on, and you also test, you know, changing uh, ad impressions and all that, that's more immediate. On YouTube, it might take a bit longer because uh, audience is built over a longer period of time. So it depends on what type of test you run. Um, so I think it will depend on, on the type. For example, if you, if you run a test on the format, you might see, you might compare the viewership at the, the first days of the viewership. Um, and that's part of the test, but also you might want to understand the performance after a few days, and that by its own definition will take a bit longer. Um, but I think it depends on the on the type of test that you that you go for. I don't know since you went through this wheel of fortune section. If you have anything no. you want to add, I, I think you're exactly right, Pablo. I mean, I would agree with what Pablo said. It depends on what you're testing. Like if you're trying to do like a thumbnail template test, right? You can see results immediately, and then you can try that template across a bunch of videos for the results over a period of time. But if you want to take a look at a format, then maybe you know you want to take a take a longer time span, which is maybe you know a few months to kind of see hey what happens. So I think it will become very specific to what you're trying to uh, find out over here. So if it's like simple optimization things, 
you can start getting a picture within a day and you know over a week or so you kind of get a picture and if these are broader changes you might want to get into the month two month kind of range great so i'll take the next question um, is there any possibility that a third party, ooh, wow, we're getting lots of votes, okay, <laughs> that, uh, that a third party app can view YouTube channel other than you, data of a YouTube, other than YouTube? So uh, I'll try to answer this question. I'm not sure exactly what this is trying to say, but if it's about accessing the overall YouTube data, we certainly do have a data API that is shared in our API center. So if you go to Google search and search for YouTube APIs, you'll see a variety of um, APIs you're able to use. Um, different services like Social Blade, Tubular are already using some of our external offerings, which is able to uh, work with our overall shared data. So please check that out. Okay. Is there any way to, okay. Is there an upcoming feature group of groups? Uh, I don't think so. And I, 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 I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. Um, is there any way to automate analytics onto a Google spreadsheet? Uh, yes. Yes, you can. I mean, if you can use our API, uh, then you should be able to pull it. And then the endpoint can be, you know, whatever. So look, one is we do have an export option, right? So once you get a view, you can export, but I'm guessing that's not what you mean. But if you want to do any kind of automation to spit it out, uh, then you'll have to use our API, uh, use the custom views that you want. And then, you know, the output can be on a dashboard or a, you know, or a spreadsheet or whatever it is that is, uh, you know, that you think is important. Uh, I don't think there will be an automated spreadsheet mailer or an update to a spreadsheet or something like that. No, that's not in the product roadmap. Um, is there any possibility that a third party app can view the analytics data of a YouTube channel other than YouTube? Um, uh, we already answered that one. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was marking them as, okay. Uh, then views versus watch time. If I increase the views, I increase revenues doesn't happen that that much with watch time. Is this correct? Um, well, mathematically, I would say it is kind of correct. Um, there's some tighter correlation between views and impressions versus views and watch time. Um, but that would be a very, very short answer. The longer answer is uh, since our systems optimized for watch time, uh, um, the more watch time you drive, uh, the more traffic you will eventually get from suggested and search and so on, um, eventually to your channels, which would in return means that you will get more views and then more revenues. In any case, it's not super accurate to say more views, more revenues. Um, it's actually more impressions, more revenues. But I think I understand uh, where it come from. The, um, a long video can be uh, monetized with more ads. Um, but yeah, I, I, would, I would go back to the main points in the <laughs> revelation. Uh, what Sid said about uh, the big point is our systems optimized for watch time. So if you focus on watch time, eventually you will also get more views if, if that makes sense. Um, I'm in the, we're getting a lot, a lot of interaction in this story, so <laughs> hard, hard to know which one is next. Um, okay, maybe I can take the purple one. Um, how do I check if my video was on the trending page through analytics? Um, that, that's a really great question. So base, I actually don't really know if we have the granularity of trending yeah, but well, they should be able to do that. Uh, when you go to yeah. traffic sources, browse features, trending. Yeah. Mm. And actually, it's an easy way to see all the videos that were trended at some point in a given period of time. Yeah. Traffic sources, browse, trending. You'll see it there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> news. 
when our analytics, oh, where can we find data on channel memberships? Oh, that's great. Um, let me just show you that actually here. Literally, uh, da, da, da. yeah, you see this uh, revenue source? Go there and you will see it. Right? Go to the detail view, click on the revenue source, you will see it. Okay, is it possible to see? I'm just picking a random one, sorry. <laughs> is it possible to see total subscribers on a given day in the past instead of how many subs gained? Um, well, uh, you can do lifetime until that moment in time and you will see the accumulated um, total subscribers on that day. Um, I don't think there's another way. Okay. Um... When are analytics going to become more real-time instead of a two-day delay? Uh, another really uh, frequently asked and popular question. Um, we actually launched a real-time metric feature about, I think, about two years ago um, to address this question. But we also realized that um, the real-time metrics wasn't fully uh, what you guys were looking for. Um, so. It's, a, it's probably not an answer that everyone wants to hear, but the two-day delay is there for a reason. Um, I think like what Kunzak mentioned in our previous webinar, uh, YouTube is constantly trying to basically clean the data. There are plenty of bots and fake views that are occurring on many, many videos. So it takes two days for us to sift through and give the viewers and yourself the right view count. And what counts as a view is also very, um, it's not something we know, but a view in the YouTube world is a viewer's intention to watch the video. So any scroll through or just, you know, skimming through a video wouldn't count as a view. So the two day delay is unlikely to go away anytime soon, but we are constantly working to make it shorter. Can we get alerts on email or Slack? Um, again, if you can use our YouTube API, we made it trending, probably not, but I think for everything else on the YouTube API, you should be able to create your own rules. So that's what I would suggest there. I think there was one, I can't see it now. Should I scroll up? Um, yeah. Or... Or maybe scroll down. I think because otherwise we already answered all of it, right? Or not. Well, we still analytics gonna become real time, views versus watch time. Export YT analytics into cloud and Google. Again, same. The answer is YouTube API, you know, for this and this. Uh, you know, please take a look at that and then you can export it into the application of your choice. So yeah, uh, just look for the YouTube data API, please. Same for this. Yeah, I think there was a question on views versus watch time that I saw before on how that is, how it works. Um, yeah, but I think, well, we went through all the questions then, it seems. All right. Okay, folks. Um, Gina, do you want to take this part? Please. Um, so everyone, uh, we have more lessons coming soon. We're actually going to be refurbishing this program. So after the production 101 class, which is happening in two weeks, um, we will be stopping the current version of the webinars and a new program will be sent to you soon. Um, so next week we have Flo, I think he's on this call actually, who will be sharing with you advertising best practices on both YouTube and Google. So if you want to advertise on the YouTube and Google network, um, be sure to register on the website, which we will update very soon. It's not open for registration yet. And in two weeks time, we will do a production 101 class. So, you know, common questions like what are the best camera equipment or softwares I need to prepare for if I want to become a YouTube creator. Uh, and Shanu from our India team will be running this session in two weeks. So I will be sending another round of invites um, 
probably end of this week. So you can be notified when you can register again. Next slide. We've already done this. And I've pinged over in our chat the link to the form. Please mark your attendance.